Hi, Rishijit. Hello, Ron. Um, can you speak a bit about time? It seems one of the deeper conditioning, at least for me, is especially as it relates to work, but not only, is this sort of nagging mind patterns about achieving, completing tasks and managing time and always sort of in some future place in the mind. Mm. Do you find that troubling in some way? Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's just a requirement of your job? I mean, sometimes it's it's fine, but oftentimes it seems um, like a deep-seated habit that's uh, removing my ability to, to enjoy what I'm actually working on or like it's sort of coming with a lack of satisfaction or sort of a judgment in the back of like not doing things fast enough or good enough or that type of yeah I think it's sort of a long yeah just a very uh Old habit. So my experience in many years of talking to people <laughs> is that there are essentially, hmm, when I can say four kinds of people who are walking some sort of spiritual path. One type is constantly burdened with their past. Another type is always leaning into the future. And humans seem to fit into these categories fairly neatly. The third type is one who is so much in the present they can never get. And I don't mean in the pre, I don't mean in presence, I mean in the present time that they cannot effectively get anything planned out because they're always so immediate. And then the fourth type is, of course, the, the one that is mm, has freed themselves of these kinds of time constraints, the belief that there is a past and there is a future and everything is so important in relation to the past or the future or this present moment. Partly we can say, especially since what you, the way you said that it most, you referenced it most often comes up for you uh, is in the work environment and so on, is that Allow yourself to understand that the work world in the West really conditions a being to be hypersensitive to time, to future, to planning, to, to staying on schedule. That's a, that's a part of that environment. So don't go too far into claiming it as you. If you if you agree to take um, a particular job or with a particular company or whatever, then do what you can to free yourself from the belief that you are doing anything. You you are simply there. 
You are fulfilling a function. It is what is required. Free the mind to do it without judgment, commentary. But you also said that you have noticed that this tends to be a larger tendency for you. It doesn't just happen at work. You tend to be this type that wants to always be leaning toward the future, leaning into time, what's happening next, what's happening next, what's happening next, what's happening next day, next week, next month, next year, this kind of future orientation. Then you can begin to do, delve into this kind of conditioning in a deeper way by asking the question. And this is a psychological process, so we have to acknowledge that at the beginning. By asking yourself the question, what's at the basis of my need to have such tight control on what's out ahead of me? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Um, yeah, in some shape or form. I think part of it is uh, sort of survival fear in one, one shape or form. And another Absolute. is... Absolutely. Very good. And the other is sort of, which is maybe another... Another version of that is uh, fear of missing out. It's, it's stress in a, in, a, in, a, in a joyful way, supposedly, but it's creating the same sort of pattern or driving the similar pattern. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, but the most important thing is, and I, I want to emphasize this with you so you don't overlook it, is the recognition that at the basis of this kind of conditioning and reinforcing that kind of conditioning is some form of fear. We don't even really need to go too deeply into it because the mind will split what the, what it thinks the, the form of the fear is into all sorts of different stories and scenarios. If you recognize, however, that what is going on in the mind is this tendency based in conditioning to try to avoid fear of some sort then you can see that this is the conditioning that is not just going on in your mind. This is also the conditioning which is going on in the mind of someone whose orientation is constantly toward the past. They are trying to avoid some fear related to an experience they had in the past and they don't wanna have that experience anymore. So they're always shielding themselves against that similar kinds of experience. So they, they become stressed over a kind of hyper awareness in the environment around them. And they're quick to judge that this experience that looks like it's coming at me now, looks like an experience I had in the past and was really unpleasant or I suffered or I was harmed and I feel I was harmed in some way. So they're protecting against that. The same with the person who's hyper vigilant in the present moment life that they're living and trying to avoid all sorts of catastrophes in the present moment. All three of these behaviors, this type of conditioning, are based in the condition of fear. There's only one way that the condition of fear can be present in you as an overriding or stressful kind of behavior pattern. And that's when the recognition, I am not the body, is not full. This is a foundation awareness that comes from deep spiritual practice but it doesn't have to come from hours and hours and hours of meditation it just has to come through the constant remembrance as often as possible that whatever it is two things one that fear is here in this moment the second thing is that that fear is related to the concept i am the body because what I'm afraid for is that this body will experience something unpleasant, untoward, uncontrolled, that, I will, that this uncertainty I'm feeling and that I'm trying to defend against is based in fear. And so once you begin to have this understanding, then just work this a little bit harder, this understanding that this is fear arising 
without needing to go any further. Don't need to name it, examine it, um, pull it apart, understand what all the inner workings of the conditioning are. Just understand fear is here now. And this fear is related to the idea, I am the body. If you can do this, then you enter into the inquiry quite naturally because the, the recognition I am not the body naturally leads us into then who am I? Who am I? Who is having this thought? Who is experiencing this fear? Who is afraid of the future? This happens quite naturally. So this becomes the gateway into the natural expression of inquiry. Yeah, it's sort of often overlooked and the mind is proposing that or immediately getting into proposing the solution to the fear. Yeah, but of course, the, the solution to the fear that the mind is going to propose is going to be in relation to getting things arranged in a certain way, getting things under control getting the thoughts controlled, getting the mind controlled, getting the body in a different situation, changing jobs, right? The, the mind is going to try to solve the fear in a place where it's unsolvable, one can say. You can momentarily resolve the fear by leaving the environment you're in or getting a new job or whatever, but the underlying fear is going to come back again unless you actually recognize this is fear. Okay, fear is here. You know, and almost develop an attitude of recognizing that you can sit in the fear and be okay. That the fear can be here. You can resolve to do nothing except watch it, right? So this brings us back to that conscious witness capacity that we have we can watch the fear we don't need to contemplate it we don't need to decide about it we don't need to make choices about it we just need to watch it and open the space for the for the fear to be resolved in a natural way because nothing lasts forever so it will resolve itself in some way and if you take the pressure off of trying to solve the fear, the fear has the possibility of just naturally dissolving into the space that you're opening for it. You do this enough times and you start to lose the fear that what is coming at you or what is out ahead of you is dangerous. You begin to gain confidence with the fact that you can breathe, remain present, all you can do is what you can do, or you can do nothing and remain present in this moment, standing in the recognition, this is fear, this is the mind, this is not me, this is related to having a body, this is related to the job, this is related to con the conditioning around stress, and now I can just stand here in it. And eventually you will become more and more capable of doing that and recognizing that you there's a strength in you that you didn't realize that was there that can allow life to sort of manifest spontaneously without you needing to put all sorts of parameters around to control your fear. Does this make sense? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And I've heard, known this, <laughs> but it seems it seems uh yeah there's a just a habit to 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 indulge into in whatever patterns of you know the fear addresses rather than actually because it, yeah, it's sort so of the, it has so the friction help, yeah. with it of just doing that's something right. that's right but the most yeah. helpful yeah but, yeah but the most helpful way to view that is to view it not as a pattern which belongs to a me, but rather as conditioning, as a function of having a body-mind. 
So take the personal out of it so that you have the opportunity to see that life is just going on on its own. This is when you can really lose fear, is when you realize that there, there is really nobody here. And what appears to be here can dance in all of this conditioning and fear and survive it quite, quite nicely, can get along in it somehow. Because that need to control is related to this, to this idea that there is a me who needs to be protected or needs to change something or needs to understand something. And the recognition that I am the self steps beyond all of that. And at the same time, supports the body mind in a sense of comfort and acknowledgement that everything is okay. This reduces the level of stress, reduces the tension in the body, reduces the tension in the mind and allows a more natural being consciousness to be here, present as the body mind and in the world. So it works directly on the root of the fear, unlike, you know, changing jobs or trying to, you know, get everything done in time or, or get the perfect schedule laid out or, or meet everybody's needs but my own, you know. <laughs> so, so the simple answer is acknowledge that when fear is there, acknowledge that the fear is not real. Acknowledge that the fear is related to the belief, I am the body. And then ask the question, is that real? Am I really just the body? Or is there something else here? And then fall back into the witnessing position and rest there. So it can all happen in a matter of split second. But it, and I think I also heard... Uh dropping any sense of me while that is happening, even right. of me doing yes. those, so that's to speak, right. that in court. That's, that's right, that's right, that's right, yeah. Yeah, you don't need to identify with the process at all even. It's just another, this is just another mm, way of saying, take a thorn to remove a thorn see what's happening in terms of the fear as a thorn and then without getting involved personally open relax no me is here now the thorn is out and if you're starting from square one and you've never done this before you might have to do this a few hundred times a day in the beginning so don't lose uh Patience with yourself. Conditioning is a strong thing. It is also not you. But do understand that with, with conditioning, there is momentum. So the way you've been relating to your life or to the world, your life in the world, is based in that conditioning. So it has a certain momentum. What you are doing by saying open, relax, I am here, there is no me, all is well. What you are doing is reconditioning a different state of mind. And this will take a little bit of time, but once this becomes your way of dealing with the fear, it will happen quite naturally without thinking about it. You'll recognize the old pattern as soon as it comes up and move into the new pattern immediately because the mind the body likes anything you do to help it de-stress and it picks up that habit much more quickly than the habit it's trying to break this is helpful 
Okay, very good. Thank you, Rishi. Yes. All right, happy to see you all, to be with you all. Hariyam Tatsat. Live in peace, live in joy, know yourself, know your own happiness, the best truth, Ayom Tatsat.